What's up, guys? It's yo boy on the Sensei back with, Reborn is the Ant King in MHA. MHAX Solo Leveling. Part 2. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. POV Beru so I guess scaring people has its consequence? Now everyone seems to think that I have some psychological problem. But the psychiatrist that is tasked with making my profile hasn't found anything weird. So I guess I am completely healthy yeah. The police didn't really like the fact that a reporter just waltzed in on a child that just returned to regular civilization. So we kind of had to change hospitals. Not that I minded or anything. The nurses there were already done with me. At least this new hospital has a nice lady in it. She's a slim woman in her 30s, she also has medium length green hair and a pretty cute face. Too bad she's got a ring on her finger. Ah. Uh, if only I was a few years older, I curse this life of mine. Now, now. I did just say that she has a ring on her. But that rarely stopped me when I was out in my past life. Picking up married women from bars wasn't that difficult. Usually, people that are in happy marriages don't spend their time alone in bars drinking. So it wasn't really all that scummy of me yeah. And hey, get your mind out the gutter. I was many things, but never a predator. I much prefer sweet talking women into sleeping with me than forcing them. So, I still have a few things to think about, most of my time is spent watching cartoons and trying to draw. Well, I fail miserably because my hands aren't exactly made for complicated work, it's hard to be an artist when your arms are actual deadly weapons, but I won't let that stop me. I have decided that I will become the best insectoid artist there is even if I am the only one. After all, I still need a goal. I don't want to wander around aimlessly as I did in my past life. Getting carried away and doing whatever was asked of me. I don't regret killing people or hurting them, I regret that I didn't do much of my own volition. The only time I did something like that was when I fled the gang life becoming an artist is a bit of a joke, I'm sure I'll lose all interest in art in less than two weeks. But I still need to find something oh my god I just realized that I am having an existential crisis as a 5 year old well, I guess a 6 year old. My birthday is in a month, so it's the same thing. Now that I think about it. I never actually celebrated a birthday well, there was a time when my boss, Vladislav, decided to throw a huge party for me. It was in my last year of working with him. But I thought it was more of a formality than anything now that I think about it, Vlad was really keen on keeping appearances. He often asked me to go play pool or go bowling with him. I guess he wanted to have a bodyguard around or something. Oh well, I'll stop dwelling on the past. No reason to keep thinking about it, crime is boring anyway. Most people say they do it because of freedom, but there's no such thing. You do something bad and the entire police force will be on your ass for years to come. Now, I still have some principles from my past life. Like not being a snitch. Because snitches don't actually get stitches they get their feet encased in buckets of cement and get dropped into the ocean. I know cuz I've done it before. Well, not the snitching part. From what I understand, the police is planning to move me to a much safer orphanage. They even plan on keeping a close eye on me. But that will probably only last for a year or two. Until the public loses interest in me and the police force doesn't get anything out of helping me anymore. That's usually how that song goes. Well, maybe Japanese authorities are a bit different, so I don't actually know. But the ones in America sure are like that. Basically, I've learned to tell how good a police force is. For example, if they find speaking to reporters and journalists a chore, then they might be good. If they look forward to exposing their manifesto to the biggest audience, then they might want to become politicians and are therefore scum. My logic is sound. I'm now getting tired of complimenting myself. So I will talk with that kind lady, Inko. Being a kid means that you get compliments for just about anything, and it's quite good for my ego. 
The green-haired nurse approached me with a sweet smile on her face. How are you feeling today little Beru? This is the only situation where I will accept a woman calling me little. I good HOW? I'm starting to actually like speaking like this. It means I have an excuse not to talk much and just listen. Oh, I'm doing just fine. That's nice of you to ask. You are the nicest kid around. Oh lord. This woman is the only one willing to actually hug me. It feels nice, not in a weird way though. I am far too young to even know what hormones are after all. I guess she's got a motherly charm and a large heart. She would be shuffling my hair if I had any, she ended up rubbing my forehead and making my antennas flail around. You are so cute. She said, gushing as she looked into my large eyes. Now, that's something I don't hear all that often lately. I guess people all have their own tastes. Still, this is why I like this lady, she doesn't even care about the weird looks her co-workers are giving her. She's just doing her best to cheer up an unfortunate child. And, even as I am now, a young adult, it's nice to see someone actually care about you. After all, she has no actual reason to do this. I've already seen that the job of a nurse isn't to make the patient happy. I mean, I wasn't expecting them to make me feel on cloud 9. But at least not make me feel like dirt. This woman raises the bar quite a bit too bad I will have to move out of this shitty hospital soon. POV Baru well then. It seems that the orphanage I moved to is quite nice. There are a lot of older kids here too. Not many girls though, which makes me sad. But the people here are nice. This old lady that takes care of the orphanage doesn't seem to care much about my outward appearance either, so that's certainly a nice aspect. I've received a special phone too. One that I can use with my claws. It makes things a bit easier, I guess technology is quite advanced in this world. Lately, I've been trying to watch more television. It's filled with heroes, and hey, I was a pretty big fan of Marvel. I still think that heroes being real in this world is quite inspiring. Although the idea of a hero sounds extremely idealistic. There is some feeling of safety to be had in knowing that someone powerful is tasked with protecting you. But that's not exactly a good thing. A lot of people with powerful abilities aren't heroes, they also aren't villains. They live normal lives with a few extra perks of being looked upon with awe from time to time. Well. Let's just say that I don't think it's a good idea to make people rely on heroes to this extent at least that's what I understood from the limited time I've spent in this strange quirk-based society. Most of the information I have is from casual observations and listening to people talk around me. My enhanced hearing makes me a perfect eavesdropper. But some aspects are still strange. Like entire schools dedicated to teaching actual children how to fight crime. Now, I did get into a pretty dangerous life at a very young age, but I still wouldn't condone others doing it. But it seems that most people actually want to be heroes anyway. Just like everyone wanted to be an actor or astronaut at some point in their lives. It's just that this hero thing is actually attainable due to the existence of these schools. Well, being an actor or an astronaut is also attainable, but not everyone is willing to put that much work into it. From my understanding, most of what you need is a decent physique and a powerful quirk. And boom. You a hero trainee now. It's strange how much they idolize these heroes. But I guess some of them do seem quite genuine. There's this big guy called All Might, he looks to be quite young, around 30 I guess, he's been stirring up quite the storm. And yes. 30 is still young, certainly not saying that because I am around 30 myself. Well, I may be trapped into a child's body, but I am still a man at heart. I also study the more adult-rated content. It seems that a lot of fetishes appeared alongside these quirks not that I mind, but I can only imagine the excitement of some groups of P.O.P.L.E. furries, if they could see some of this shit. Beru. Let's go play. Screamed out a kid. I was on my bed, I obviously took the top bunk bed. I looked down at him. S-U-R-E no need to be mean to kids. I also have nothing better to do than to spend time with them. This kid. Sauma something is quite friendly. Well, he's been nice since day one, I'd say he's been raised quite well, even without parents. Although, not everyone in the orphanage seems to be just as friendly. Sauma is a bit of a pushover from time to time. I've seen some of the older kids ordering him around quite often. But I won't pry too much. As long as they don't get violent with each other, I don't care. I may be 6 years old, 
but I am quite certain I can down most adults. At least if they don't have some overpowered bullshit ability like mine. Salma and I ended up going to the playground, I just watched him swing around on metal bars whilst I practiced my flying. You see, I don't really want to stay on the ground all the time, although my legs are strong, I am still lazy. I want to be able to lay around in the air and just flap my wings around. But it seems I still need some more strength in my wings. Until I heard a shout from underneath me. Beru. Can you do a flip Salma is really making me work huh? Oh well, why not? I started doing somersaults in the air. I could hear the little brat gasp and awe. But it's not even that big of a deal. I guess children are quite easily impressed. In the end. I landed on a pole that was striking out on top of the slide. It was basically the highest point on the playground. I was balancing myself on one leg and just staying there. This much isn't really difficult, especially after spending five years doing balancing acts on three branches. Oh, the little freak is showing off. Well, there are the rude kids. Salma seems to have hidden behind the slide. I guess these three are the bullies in the orphanage? They obviously move as three people. One person with a decently powerful quirk will always be the leader of such gathering of idiots. SHUT up my distorted voice seemed to creep him out a bit. I don't think this kid saw the news broadcast from that time, he wouldn't have that much courage if he did. Oh really? And what are you gonna do kid? Oh wow, what a cocky idiot. But he's still a kid. I won't cut him up because of his aggressive attitude. Although he isn't getting on my good books, that's for sure. What are you looking at, huh? Fucking bug eyes, you scared off all the girls in the orphanage. Yep. He sure wants to die. Still, I find fighting a child to be quite beneath me. So I'll just do my usual response. I jumped down to a spot near him. He ATM -E bitch and just like that he charged at me. Works every time. He started swinging his fists around, his fists turning into spiked balls. I guess that's his quirk? Oh well. I just took a step out of his reach every time he got too close. He's a tad bit too young to understand the concept of reach and arm span. He was tired after a minute or two. I guess using his quirk tired him out. The other two were hesitant at first, but they also joined up at some point. But whether it's one kid or three, it doesn't matter one bit. They were all on the ground by the end of it. Good workout. I haven't danced like that in a while. I could see Salma with a surprised look on his face, as well as a silly excited smile. Really, what a shitty brat. POV Beru it's already been two years since I've gotten to this orphanage. And I must say, it's quite the place. The bullies aren't really bothering me and my official lakey, Salma. I really took a liking to this kid, he also managed to develop some guts after a while. I guess my awesomeness can rub off on others too huh? Well, I am already 8 years old. Time seems to go by so slowly, it's almost a miracle. I get to enjoy the nice feeling of not worrying about taxes not like I ever did. Not much has happened to me, but I did grow much stronger and a bit taller. I am around 1.3 meters now. And I think I could take on that shitty meathead robber by only relying on brute strength now. And that might not sound like much, but what has actually improved way beyond my expectations is my speed. I seem to be able to accelerate to amazing speeds. I'm sure I can reach around 70 km per hour if I really force myself to. Making me beat Usain Bolt's record by at least 20. Although competition seems quite unfair in this case because I am also an actual mutant. So yeah. But my airspeed is only around half of that, which is still good. At least I can fly without any issue, maneuverability and all of that. 35 km per hour is still decent speed, I also don't really get tired whilst flapping my wings anymore, I can keep it up for at least 3 hours. A lot of progress in just 2 years not really. I haven't gained any special ability at all, I only ate regular food, fruits vegetables. I might have to sneak up to a mountain range and look for new things to eat. Like tigers, or go to the sea and look for sharks. Not like regular animals can harm me anyway. I can easily gobble up a bear now. Well, not literally, but I can kill it swiftly. Now, that's about it with what's been happening. Well, there's something else too. Salma also awakened his quirk, a bit later than most, but it seems to be a regeneration factor of sorts. Not really sure, wasn't listening. 
He's been sticking to me like a flea, but he's at least nice. The other kids are not really too into talking to me. And I did find out that there are more girls in this orphanage eventually, but my appearance did scare them away, making them spend more times in their rooms. I guess that random shitty bully wasn't joking. But I don't really care what a few snotty brats think of me. Beru. Do a flip. Besides, it's not like I don't have a friend. Does this little rascal think I am some clown in a circus? Well, you know the saying. Life's a circus. And I'm the clown. But seeing this innocent kid's smile isn't all that bad of a reward for a few flips in the air. They also helped me train my mobility in mid-air. So why not? I did a few flips as I was flying around, my wings making a faint buzzing noise every time they flapped. And they were flapping quickly, much too quickly for little Salma's eyes to follow. I once again landed in my usual spot, the highest point of the playground, the majestic pole atop the slide. Really makes me feel graceful. Having a little kid cheer me on is also not that bad. Today some person is coming by to adopt some children. I think they are a bit important because I heard the headwoman talk about that visit with the other staff members quite often. But it doesn't really matter to me, no one will actually pick an insect as their kid. And I also don't even want to think about calling someone daddy uh. Moving on. I think I can see a car approaching the orphanage, not that unusual. But this one is a strange black van that reminds me of the car I used to dispose of bodies in it just feels off. Must be my gut instinct. I saw a man get off, he was wearing a classy suit, and he had short black hair. He seemed to be quite fit. His body seemed to be filled with muscles, they weren't really noticeable through his suit, but I can tell. I guess he looks important, maybe he's the one doing the adopting? He's got a strange vibe to him I wouldn't really trust him around kids. But that's just my years of seeing shady people speaking up. Maybe he's not all that bad. Or maybe not. The speakers announced his arrival to the entire orphanage as soon as he stepped foot towards the front gate. Salma seemed quite excited to hear that the man looking for an adoptive son had arrived. We are all supposed to gather in the same room and form a line, letting the prospective parent get a good look at all of us. At least in this case. We all received special instructions. It all feels too shady. I don't like this. As soon as I entered the room, I already started eyeing up the windows and judging the strength with which I must fly at them to break through. But I can't really leave my lakey here alone. That would be a bit uncool of me. The man entered with a grin on his face, with the owner in tow. As he started asking questions about each and every one of us. He seemed especially interested in our quirks. But that's not really unusual in this day and age. Everyone wants to be a hero, and every parent wants their children to become heroes. So you reach a point where every parent wants their children to have powerful quirks. A shitty facet of this society that I have yet to get used to. Still, he seems to be adopting multiple children at once. This is quite weird, but he's also choosing the ones with the better quirks. Like the bully, who should already be around 10 or 11. He also seemed quite surprised and excited to be chosen. He's still a kid, after all, they've been taught to think that this is good. But I really don't like the way he's eyeing some of the children POV Beru I looked on as he chose a few more kids. Eventually, reaching Salma. And what's this little man's quirk? He tried to sound friendly, but all he ever asked about was quirks. He didn't show any interest in anything else. His quirk is a decently powerful regeneration factor. It wasn't extensively tested, but the doctors said it's affected by his stamina. The old lady managing the orphanage wasn't hesitating at all when telling this man everything about the quirks of the kids. Hmm, I will adopt this one too. He said with an obviously fake smile. This man isn't a good actor at all. This almost feels like an auction one that I am also on display for. And if this man is looking for quirks, for whatever reason, he will likely choose me too. Or not he just passed by me after one glance, I guess he isn't all that interested in mutant quirks. But, Salma, the little kid put his foot down. Hey. If I am going Beru is coming too. Good job, being involved in this might not make me feel good. I wouldn't feel well letting some kids go into such a sketchy van. Especially since I took a bit of a liking to this Salma brat. The man tracked back to Salma. Look down at him, not the way an adult looks down at children though. He didn't crouch down to get eye level with him. 
He just coldly stared at the kid. I swear to god if he raises his hand I will cut his DK off and make him eat it. Is Beru the boo child beside you? He was definitely about to say bug, and I was definitely about to gouge his eyes out. Yes. He's my friend. The man had a cold look in his eyes. But Salmut and the rest of the children were too caught up in this situation to notice such things. Although I could see my little friend getting a bit uncomfortable. As I said, this man doesn't seem to know how to talk to children. He's probably just a recruiter of sorts. Is child slavery a thing in this country? I guess I'm about to find out. Good. Then I'll be taking him as well. He said whilst looking at the old manager. She just looked a bit at him and nodded. I guess it doesn't matter much, the media has already lost interest in my story a few months back. The public has all but forgotten me. The police aren't really surveilling me either. They only did so for a few months anyway. Probably to keep up appearances. He kept going on to the next few kids, adopting a few more with a variety of quirks. In total, he adopted seven children. Well, eight with me, but I'd hesitate to call myself a child. We were all ushered to his car, as he told us to get into the back. Most of the children were too caught up in the excitement of getting adopted to feel strange about being cramped up in a black van. We were taken to a warehouse in the southern part of the city. I made sure to watch for its location. He opened the door and just said. Get out. We all listened to him. Halfway through the silent ride some of the children started realizing that this was a bit strange. Some started feeling scared. Em mister? See can I go back, please? I I don't want she stopped speaking when he glared at her. Seriously. He's looking at a kid like I was looking at people I killed back in the day. This is nuts. Get inside. He said, completely ignoring the shivering little girl. I simply patted her back, she was startled by it. But she managed to hold the tears and just whispered a small thank you. I would have killed this brute right here, but I don't want to do something of the sort in front of children. Although if things go south. I'll just tell them to close their eyes. We all entered, listening to the person that adopted us. There were two more people inside. One was tall, skinny, with long red hair. He was wearing traditional clothing, on his waist was a sheathed katana. Yep, this is Japan all right. Whilst the other was fat and bald. Looking like a hairless pig. He was constantly stuffing his face. Almost as if his life depended on it. Did you pick the right ones? The red-haired one asked. But then he looked at me. I guess not. A kid thought he could order me to adopt someone else. I just took this one to set an example with him. Oh good. This makes things so much easier all of the children were scared at this point. And in some way, I guess we were all shivering. After all it's been a long time since I had a good fight. Ha. Huh. So cruel. What will the boss say? Said the pig, who was currently snacking on some chips. He was clearly finding this amusing. I can't wait to make him choke on my claws. Well, he never said I couldn't pick more kids. He just told us to bring him the right ones. I could let their moronic conversation continue. As much as I'd like to hear more about their boss, I really don't want the kids to be scarred for life. Now then he turned around and looked directly at Salma, who was shivering in fear, clutching my arm like it was his only lifeline. The man started approaching us as he spoke. I should teach you brats what your places are right and c-l-o-s-e-y-o-u-r-i's. I screeched out, the children surprisingly listened to me. Maybe they noticed that I was the only one unaffected by this, and decided to listen to me. Before the man could even look angry, his head flew off, as I appeared above him, my wings flapping violently as my claws were covered in his blood. A surprise attack won't work twice. But that's one opponent taken care of. Now on to the other two. POV Beru the head of our kind adoptive father didn't even get to touch the ground, before the red-haired guy had his swords out. And I was already onto him. His blade clashed with my claws, coming to a standstill. The pig was the one to break it up, lifting a huge club over his head and trying to smash it into me. I guess their quirks aren't really combating types? Or maybe that's a bit too quick of a judgment to make. I dashed at the much slower pig. He wasn't fast enough to bring down his club and meet my assault, but the swordsman was. I decided to take his counterattack. my exoskeleton has taken much worse in the past after all. 
But I wasn't expecting his sword to catch fire and the blade to heat up to the point where he scratched my powerful armor, I guess that's his quirk then. I quickly jumped back, not before taking a good swing at the pig, whilst the swordsman was still trying his best to dig into my sides. Then came the next unexpected thing. The fat man rushed me, with a burst of speed far greater than my own. He smashed me through the wall of the warehouse with his belly. Hahaha. <laughs> That's what you get brat. Taunted the pig. Hey, let's pick one of these kids as meat shields. Said the swordsman. As he started heading their way. Fucking bastard POV narration the children were all trembling on the ground, too afraid of the sounds around them to open their eyes. The red-haired swordsman was blocked by a piece of metal thrown his way. Baru walked back in. Wiping his mouth with his claw. I am rusty. Spoke the monstrous insectoid. As the words left his mouth. As the clothes barely covering the fat man's belly. Were shredded. His eyes widened as he looked down, only to see his guts spilling onto the ground. He quickly followed them, as Baru licked his bloody claw. He had always been an opportunistic person. Seeing the fat man present his stomach to him in that way would obviously be appetizing to him. It gave him a perfect opportunity to gut the pig alive. Something he hadn't done to someone in ages. This was also the first time he did it with his claws. The red-haired swordsman looked on in horror as his companion fell to the ground. What he didn't expect was his insect-like opponent to gain a sudden burst in movement. One that greatly reminded him of his fat comrade's quirk, sudden acceleration which enhanced the user's speed twofold for the duration of 5 minutes. The cost was in calories, and it could only be used once every 24 hours. It wasn't an extremely powerful quirk, but it was still noticeable. The red-haired swordsman could barely bring his sword up to block the incoming swipe, and it still dug into his side. He didn't even get to use his quirk at all, fiery aspect which allowed him to cover his body or things he touched in flames. The only problem with it was that he couldn't handle his own heat all that well. The quirk didn't raise his heat resistance at all. The red-haired man's blood splattered onto Baru's claws and a bit on his face. He instinctively licked it up. After a few seconds of being in a stalemate, Baru's claws caught fire and melted through the man's sword. Cutting him in half in the process and burning his wound closed as well. Baru stopped and looked at his claws as they seemed to release some steam after the fire died down. He blinked a bit and looked down at what remained of his opponent. He tilted his head, seeing that the man was somehow still alive. Pete please save M whatever sympathy he was trying to gain. He wasn't going to be receiving any. Baru crushed his head underneath his clawed foot. He wasn't even able to finish pleading for his life. The insectoid knew all too well how people like the swordsman behaved after being spared. Besides, the man was already as good as dead. Baru felt it was better to rip it off like a band-aid than to prolong the red-haired man's suffering. Out of the three, only the pig was somehow still alive. But he was also not going to survive. He was gutted alive, even if he was in a hospital, he'd have extremely low chances of survival. Baru looked at all three of his aggressors. Musing how exactly he should explain this to children, although the fat man was almost impossible to cover up. Still, he did his best. Children all of you should turn around and leave keep your eyes closed. He was shocked by his own voice, the clarity was something he needed to get used to now. Some distortion was still present, but he could now speak full sentences without any problem. It seemed like his quirk was a lot more than he had theorized, after all, he had just used two different quirks after ingesting just a bit of blood from their original users. He had a lot of thinking to do. What he didn't expect was for someone to be waiting at the door. A tall man wearing a classy suit. His body was filled with muscles, and his hair was white. He slowly clapped his hands. Marvelous show to think something so interesting would show up right on my doorstep, he smiled as he leaned onto the van that had brought the children to the warehouse. That should be the leader thought Baru as he eyed the man cautiously. POV Baru what the fuck is this man? This is the first time I've felt this threatened by someone's presence. He hasn't even done anything remotely aggressive yet. And my instincts are telling me to just run. Could I even run? I mean, I may be fast, but this guy did just appear out of nowhere. And if I were to run, what would happen to the children? What does this man have planned for them? I may not be the most upstanding individual. 
but I quite unwilling to just let a few kids walk away with this guy, but what exactly am I to do? I could go along with them and wait for the most opportune moment to kill him. But would that really work? He seems to be cut from a different cloth compared to the other weaklings I fought before, who are you? I tilted my head a bit, I don't really know what I'm hoping for at this point. I'm just stalling the inevitable. Oh, you can talk? Marvelous, well, I have a few names, but I am more commonly called all for one. What's with the theatrical pauses? Does he expect us to know him or something? His name obviously wouldn't be impactful to a group of children. I think this is just the way he talks then I just looked at him for a bit, he seems to be judging my reaction. If I was to rush him with my greatest speed, I would likely be able to at least injure him, I don't really know what his quirk is though, I am just going on instincts here. Well then all of you should go inside for now, he said as he opened a black misty portal fuck. The children all took a collective step back when seeing the ominous portal. It didn't really look like a happy place that he was planning on taking us to. I don't want to enter that. But if I rush him now, I could at least give an opportunity for the kids to escape maybe. So I did just that, I pushed my body to its greatest speed, becoming a blur and appearing right in front of him. Run. I screeched as I extended my claws towards all for one's chest, trying to gouge out his heart. He just stood there, a devious smile spreading on his face. My claws dug through his shirt and hardly pierced his skin, but were stopped as he flexed his muscles. Why? Aren't my claws sharp enough to cut steel? Why is his body so hard? Is that his quirk? Most likely. This means that I can't really do slashing damage. Stay put his cold smile turned into a scowl. I jumped backwards and looked at him a bit. He didn't even get to bleed before his wound closed itself. What? Does he have a certain type of regeneration too? His fingers turned black and extended themselves towards me, I could barely move to avoid them. But they followed me. Each piercing one limb and impaling me to the ground. I could only watch as the next scene unfolded. Out of the portal came another large man. Also dressed in a suit, he had brown hair and a squared jawline. He just waddled over and brought the fleeing children closer to all for one. They were children, after all, they couldn't run that far with the little time I managed to buy them. All for one looked at all of them as they were shivering in fear and smiled. He extended his right arm and touched the head of the first one. The child screamed in agony as red lightning seemed to come off from the place they made contact. He quickly fainted as all for one went to the next child. The scene repeated itself a few times, I was still pinned to the ground, struggling in vain. POV narration Baru looked on as every single one of the children he was trying to protect collapsed. Even his childhood friend, Salma, could only look in fear as he pleaded for help. Baru. Please save me. The child's helpless scream only seemed to further please the powerful man. Baru watched in silence as they were all crumpling on the ground. He didn't feel any anger, he didn't feel any hate. His mind was as cold as a blizzard. How much time will it take for me to reach his power? One year? Two? A decade? One thing was for sure. I will hunt this man down, for as long as he breathes for as long as I breathe, I vow to become this man's most terrifying nightmare. Strange energy overtook his body, a powerful desire to dominate the existence of the man in front of him, to make him more miserable than humanly possible. All for one could feel the sudden pull on his black extended fingers. He looked down, he had been disappointed at the lack of verbal reaction from the strange mutant quirk child. But the next actions weren't something he expected would ever happen. The child dragged himself up, completely ignoring the tendrils holding him to the ground. All for one tried to use more force, but the insectoid wouldn't even budge. He stared blankly at the most powerful villain in Japan, Y-O-U-W-I-L-L die at number at dollar any clarity was gone from the child tone. His voice was a distorted mess, creepy and disturbing to no end. But that wasn't what shook all for one to the core. No, the intent behind those words was a frightening thing to behold. He could feel it in his bones, a foreboding feeling. Telling him to quickly kill the abomination while he still could. But his pride didn't let him register this as a threat. No, he already decided to create a subordinate of this little child. That was something he would come to regret dearly. But some things simply cannot be taken back in life. And all for one unknowingly sealed his own fate this very day.
POV Baru waking up in a strange room isn't something I am unaccustomed to. That man likely kidnapped me. I doubt he wants me dead. If he did he wouldn't have bothered with all of this. Maybe he wants to experiment with me? It wouldn't come off as a surprise. I don't exactly have a regular quirk. I am currently chained to a bed. I can easily break these puny restraints. But then what? I am not able to fight that man yet. I need more strength, more power, more food. If I could get just a bite out of him, I would become so much stronger, but it seems I am asking for a bit much right now. Especially since I am not even in control of my own fate at this point. This is quite annoying, but I will make sure to repay him eventually everything his death will be the most prolonged nightmare I can think of. But now, I need to survive whatever he has in mind for me. It seems that I can also devour quirks I will build up my strength slowly, bringing myself to a higher level over time. I will wait for an opportunity to slay him. But I need to find a way to absorb more quirks if I am to kill that man. He also seemed to have more than one power. Regardless, he is still my prey, I will figure something out eventually. For now I can only wait. There isn't anything else to do. POV narration all for one was having a strange day. It wasn't like him to be frightened like that. He especially wasn't expecting a small child to be the source of that fear. At the time, he had instinctually tried to take Beru's quirk. But something blocked him from doing so. His quirk tried to pull the child power and make it its own. But something strange happened, he could feel a strange power, it was monstrous, much like his own. He had run into quirks he couldn't steal before, but this wasn't normal. It was as if his own quirk was sending him warning signs every time the bug child twitched a finger. It was clear enough that whatever that child had it wasn't a quirk. Perhaps the next evolution of quirks? A new generation of power? All for one could feel himself getting excited at the notion of gaining even more power. Only, this one couldn't even be classified as a quirk anymore. He had seen the results of the medical examinations that Beru undertook. They were the first things he asked for when he came back to his hideout. The doctors stated that they couldn't understand what part of him remained human. They also couldn't understand what his quirk actually was. He was a completely different species DNA-wise, there was no quirk to speak of. Under normal circumstances, such a child would become a guinea pig. But the media attention on him at the time didn't allow for such things. The government decided to wait for things to settle down, and commanded news articles to stop reporting on the child. However, it seems that All for One was a bit faster in getting his hands on Beru. And let's just say that he was beyond intrigued. He also managed to find a medical examination from the birth of Beru. It stated that the child didn't even have vocal cords. Meaning that he either developed them during his life or something else happened which allowed him to gain the ability to speak. Regardless, both were leading him to the same conclusion. Beru could repeatedly mutate himself, either consciously or subconsciously. But there was no quirk factor to be had inside the child. Therefore, he had the possibility to gain a quirk or even two, depending on how their research would progress. All for one and his associate Kayadai Garaki could finally start, the Nomu Project Beru was to be the first one in a long line of genetically modified monsters, with unwavering loyalty to the super villain. At least that was the plan. They didn't realize how big the mistake they were making was. They had no idea that Beru had the ability to absorb any power he devoured. The choice to turn him into a Nomu only hurried all for one's incoming doom. It gave Beru a great way to accumulate strength, as for the loyalty part, Beru had always been a great actor. It was even easier now that he needed to pretend to be a brainless servant. He didn't need to speak, he didn't need to bother showing any intelligence. And all for one was pleased, he thought he had created the perfect servant. The first five years of Beru's captivity were all the same. All for one coming to the laboratory and meeting up with Kayadai on a regular basis. The latter would explain whatever new ability he had managed to implant into their most successful Nomu. The process of gaining new quirks was painful at first, but eventually, he was given a pain nullification quirk that eased the process by a lot. Kayadai decided that pain nullification would make the process much easier, as he no longer needed to bother with the little anesthetic he was giving during the first operations. Now, Beru had more quirks than before. He didn't even keep track of them, but he had heard all for one say that he was the perfect quirk container. 
The five years spent inside a cold laboratory were difficult. And Baru gained the strength to leave at some point. But he decided not to. If he left then he wouldn't have a good way of gaining more strength. However, All for One's visits became less and less frequent. And, in the last year, he had stopped coming to Coyote's laboratory altogether. Baru realized that something was wrong. But he still decided to wait. He was already 13 years old, he still didn't think that he could defeat All for One. But now the man was starting to give him missions, all of them through a monitor, not even showing his face. Baru was starting to feel an ounce of suspicion about the man's state. But he didn't want to act rashly yet. He had already waited five years. What would a few more be? POV Baru it's certainly been a while since I've been let out in the world five years spent in a laboratory isn't exactly how I thought I'd spend my new life. But hey, I am now closer than ever to killing that all for one guy. His sudden disappearance is a bit strange though. I didn't get many chances to observe him whilst acting brain dead. But Kayadai, the doctor, also started being absent from his own laboratory most of the time. That's not really an issue, I'm sure the creep has a few more of those scattered around Japan. As for my development I don't really know I haven't had much of a chance to study my own power. And I was only commanded to use a new quirk whenever I got one. I grew a bit in height. Currently standing at 1.6 meters. A bit above the average, but I am not really human am I? My body is just as slender as before. My claws extending all the way to my knees when standing straight. Everything about me has been enhanced. That much I can tell, all of the quirks I have absorbed strengthen my body to no end. I don't even remember half of them though. Especially since I didn't find all that many of them interesting. The majority of them were strength enhancers. Quirks that would, one way or another, add to my already inhuman amount of strength. As I am right now, I think I could be able to fight all for one. But I don't just want to win I want to ruin every single one of his dreams. I will start by looking for an opportunity to kill his beloved disciple. Although I doubt the man has any actual emotions towards the kid, I am sure he needs him for something. Well, I say kid, but he's older than my current body by a few years. Not that it matters much, but the brat keeps thinking too highly of himself. I've only met him, on a few occasions, I think his name was Shigaraki. Don't care, but him ordering me around was the most annoying. I could ignore him a few times. But after all for one told me to take his orders seriously, I had no choice but to do so. My time in captivity was mostly spent doing nothing and trying out new quirks they decided to put into me. Which, I could say that it wasn't all that horrible an experience. Although any kid might have been traumatized by the experience. Having my body operated on whilst awake wasn't exactly pleasant for me either. But after gaining the pain nullification quirk it all became water under the bridge. Infinitely growing stronger was a great feeling. It would have made me grow arrogant had it not been for the knowledge that I still can't ruin all for one's life easily. As for now? I will start doing missions for the big man it seems. He likely wants to test my loyalty and to see what intellect I still have left. Even though I played brain dead, I could still pretend to act on instinct. Which lead them to believe that I still have some sentience left in me. And I played along, as that helps me greatly. Acting completely brain dead for five years straight is very annoying. Funny thing, Kayadai, with all of his smarts and fancy equipment, has yet to realize what exactly my work is. He has theorized a few things about it. But he doesn't have anything concrete on it. He said that he wouldn't even believe that I was human had all for one not interrogated the doctors that were present at my birth. And, fair enough, it's not like I care for it anyway. Whether I am human or not is of little importance. Well, besides women looking at me weirdly. Or, people in general. It's also been a while since I've been near any actual humans. Afo and his crew don't count, I haven't really been left to wander around though. I was sent to kill off a random gang of drug traffickers. I don't see how this helps all for one in any way, but then again, this is a test, so it doesn't matter. Bit of a shame that I need to re-enter criminal life this early. But I can just say that I didn't have any choice. Leaving Kayadai's hospital and taking in a lungful of fresh air made me feel great. But windling around might make me seem a bit more suspicious. I unfurled my wings, they revealed themselves from underneath my exoskeleton armored back and carried me into the night. I don't even know how quickly I can fly now. 
But, after flapping my wings a few times, I already went over the clouds. I hovered a bit in place, before settling my sights on Hosu City, and darting in that direction. I immediately sped up greatly, the clouds around me parting as I cut through them with my body, and released shockwaves every time I flapped my wings a bit. It took me no less than 5 minutes to reach Hosu City. And I'm pretty sure Kayadai's laboratory is at least a thousand kilometers away from it. I quickly landed in a random alleyway and made my way towards the hideout of the crystal peddlers. It was just a random warehouse, the type you'd expect to have a gang hiding in. I bet they are just a few no-name losers trying to start up a business in this area. Too bad they didn't really choose all that well. I scoured the building, turning on one of the many quirks I had, that enhanced my infrared vision to the point where I could observe them through thick cement. There was a basement to this warehouse too, that was strange, but it was likely made by these guys. At the front door, were situated two people, one seemed to have a mutant quirk that made his hands look like those of gorillas, and the other seemed to have gun barrels for fingers. They were the only ones on the surface. The rest were underground. Not really interesting quirks, but I won't hesitate to add them to my ever-growing collection. I reached the door, with a single swipe of my claw, it was cut down and fell like a cardboard cutout. The men were quickly alerted, but that didn't help them much. I slowly stepped in as they were frightened by my appearance. They both took a step back. The one with gorilla hands surprisingly picked up a barrel he was standing on and threw it at me. It came whistling towards me at breakneck speeds. I just let it hit me, not even budging. I looked as the two panicked a bit. The man pointed all ten of his fingers at me and shot a hail of bullets in my direction. They didn't make any sound, but seemed to be as strong as regular bullets are. I once again didn't budge at all. Only looking at them a bit. The marksman decided to try and run to alert his friends. I can't really let that happen now can I? I looked at him, tapping my foot on the ground once as it swallowed him whole. Leaving only an arm outside. This is the effect of an enhanced quirk all for one put into me. He hasn't realized how strangely quirks seem to support each other in my body. The gorilla-handed man started screaming in fear, but I decided to silence him with a quick beheading. I licked my claws as I took in my new ability. Not really great, but it seemed to be able to bulk up my arms a bit when used. Then I went to the marksman's hand and cut it open, licking my claws once again. I turned my claws into gun barrels at a thought and randomly shot a bullet into the wall of the warehouse. It shook the entire building and raised a lot of dust. It probably passed through a few more warehouses before stopping. I guess some of the quirks I have strengthened it. Oh well. Let's see what other quirks these guys have to give me. POV Baru I descended into the well-lit basement. It was an underground bunker with four different floors. I am quite sure there are around 40 people in total. But that doesn't dissuade me. I want to see what's so important about this hideout that all for one would send his most powerful creation. Even as a test, he wouldn't really give me something too easy to do. He's not that kind. I ran into a few more people on the stairs, they were likely checking on the loud noises from earlier. I decapitated them rather quickly. The five people didn't even have the time to gasp or be scared. I feel a bit bad, but they are criminals too, they know the dangers of their lifestyle. A swift death is merciful for some of them. I've tortured people before, and some would argue that the surgeries inside Kayadai's laboratory are also torture, so I've been on both ends. The people in the lower level were alarmed, probably because everyone that went up didn't come back down and weren't responding on their radios. After slaughtering everything on the first two floors I started getting bored. I decided that it would be a bit annoying to kill every one of them personally. So I decided to make a bold move. I stomped on the ground with great force, making it tremble as it started to cave in. I broke through it and crushed the people underneath me. Surprisingly, the fourth floor was still intact, although everyone in it was alerted by the noises. I think the entire district heard that last one. Oh well, I'll just wrap things up quickly before the cops show up. I don't feel like having even more guns pointed at me today. The last floor was filled with traps. Ineffective on me because I was somewhat immune to their projectiles, but they seemed quite useful. I will likely borrow this quirk too. As for how I know they are quirk-made traps? The walls show no signs of any construction. 
Using my many vision aiencing quirks I can discern that these traps appeared after the wall was built. Well, all of this fast thinking would be difficult without any mind enhancing quirk. Some might find my sudden knowledge of walls to be quite strange, but most of the fun activities I've done in the last 5 years consisted of starting at walls so. Yeah, they probably realized that I activated all of their traps since they were waiting with their guns drawn and quirks flared up, ready for combat. One of them turned his arms into large thorny vines and tried to hold me in place. But I wasn't going to just let him do that. Using fire would be effective, but the vines aren't exactly dry, so they won't burn all that well. I just cut his vines as soon as they reached me. The surprising thing was that the vines actually bled, and the man screamed out in pain. Now I suddenly don't feel like taking his cork with me. The rest of the people there attempted to shoot me down, some were holding handguns, whilst others had SMGs. This is quite strange, I was pretty sure Japan gun laws are a bit restrictive. I guess that just makes the black market more profitable. I mean, people always want to get their hands on illegal stuff. And something being forbidden is usually taken as a challenge by some of the more daring folk. The bullets all stopped on my exoskeleton, I just stared at them as they kept unloading their lead, naughty, in my general direction. Eventually, I got bored and decided to end their struggle. My right arm seemed to inflate itself with air, I pointed my palm towards them as they kept desperately shooting me. A massive wave of pressurized air was released as my arm started slowly shrinking. This quirk, air cannon, is all for one's favorite power. And I can see why. The wave crushed all of the people in front of me into the wall and shook the entire basement once again. This time, the walls gave in, the ceiling started falling on top of all of us. And I don't like the thought of being buried early, so I took off like a bullet. I pierced through the falling debris threatening to crush everyone there and left the warehouse through the roof. Bit of a shame that I couldn't get the trap making quirk, but actually finding it would be quite hard. Overall, it's not worth the hassle. As soon as I left, the entire building started sliding into the ground, forming a man-made sinkhole. I hovered right underneath the clouds for a few seconds, using my infrared vision to make sure there were no survivors. Instead, I managed to catch sight of a car getting caught up in the sinkhole's expansion. Now, I'm not the good Samaritan sort. But I don't like the idea of implicating random people in my issues. So I decided to do my good deed for the day, or the decade in my case, and swooped down, hovering above their tilting car. I sunk my fingers into the top of their car, the metal bending and twisting as I gripped the car with one hand. After getting a good grip I flapped my wings with great strength, taking the car with me, as the roof was bent in an upwards motion. I heard womanly screams coming from the car, which is quite weird since there is a man and a woman inside it. I guess he has a high-pitched voice? Oh, whatever. A pure mind would wonder what exactly is this couple doing being parked near a secluded warehouse in the middle of the night. But a person with a more developed frontal lobe, a degenerate like me, would instantly be capable of telling you what these two were planning to do inside that car. I gently placed their car outside of the danger zone, just dropped it off. The screaming stopped eventually and I left after making sure they were people and not banshees. Who screams that much? And why does it sound so ghastly? Anyway, my gangsta senses are ticking off, that must mean that law enforcement is quickly approaching, so it's about time I fucked off POV narration, the police didn't know what to make of their newest case. Hosu City had been a relatively normal city, this amount of action wasn't quite expected. An entire organization of dangerous villains and drug traffickers went down in a single night or, rather, in a few minutes. At first, they were confused, thinking this was a strange natural sinkhole incident. Strange as in it wasn't picked up by any of their specialized radars beforehand. But the bodies inside quickly dissuaded them from that conclusion. Sure, many of them were killed by being crushed. Some died due to the rubble, sure. But for many, it was more of them being forced into a wall. Some of the corpses were still nailed into a wall when they were found. Then, they found other causes of death. Missing limbs, heads, that were still to be found in the wreckage. This was clearly the work of a murderer or a group of murderers. One seemed to be embedded into a piece of earth in an unnatural way. This massacre was deemed to have been carried out by a small group of people, with different quirks. They know for a fact that there were at least three people. 
One seemed to have claws, from the slashes on some of the bodies, and the other was an odd earth manipulation one. The last one was more of a stretch, they didn't know the limitations of the earth quirk. But by studying the cracks on the wall where they found the embedded bodies, they discovered that the people were pushed towards it with great force, rather than being swallowed up by it. And their injuries reflected that theory. But that was most of what they had to go on. Especially since they couldn't find anything about the appearance of the perpetrator. The few available cameras in that abandoned corner of town just showed a shadow or two. They were hard to discern from the dark of the night. All they had for identifying the suspect was the testimony of the two witnesses and survivors. A couple that was almost caught up in that mess. They were saved in time by an unknown assailant. Who the police put as the main suspect for now, as they also fled the scene instantly. The savior seemed to be the one that inflicted the claw wounds on the bodies. At least judging by the marks on top of the car. And it seemed that his quirk also gave him the ability to fly. As he carried their car into the air. The police were slowly starting to piece together a quirk profile for a suspect. They hoped this to be the corner piece for the case. Eventually, after a month or two, a board intern managed to find an old file. A mutant quirk that allowed the user to fly and that permanently transformed his hands into claws. But it was a rather somber case file. It was a grim reminder for the police station. A display of gross negligence on part of the law enforcement from their country. Beru. That was the only name given, no family name at all. A quirk that completely transformed the child's genetic makeup and physiology from birth. It indeed gave him the ability to fly, and his claws were described as dangerously sharp. But the file was relating to something else. Well, two different cases in fact. One of them being a kidnapping disappearance case where he was let off on a mountain only a few months old to die by himself. The trial which he survived. And the second read much in the same way, being adopted by a strange unidentified individual, and disappearing off of the face of the earth. There were no other records of him. He was also not the only one to disappear that day. He was one of many. The orphanage was swiftly closed, and the lady managing it was arrested eventually. Using a lie detector quirk of a new cadet, they managed to find out what had happened. At least in part. They were taken by a powerful man, and she was paid a lot to turn a blind eye to however many were chosen. Money which she accepted with a smile. It was a convoluted case. It leads to the lady basically gaining a life sentence in a high security prison. In which she died around two years later. This was where the details on the file ended. They kept any malicious interest the researchers might have had on this new breed of quirk out of the file. Only a few select people knew about it. And they obviously wouldn't speak up about it. The person that discovered the file quickly gave it to the chief. Who proceeded to start a formal investigation. Taking this to be the reappearance of the boy that had disappeared that day. Although, it was by no means a happy occasion. As the things he had taken part in were horrendous. But, as a child, Beru would have many ways to escape prosecution, they just needed to somehow catch him, when they didn't even know where he was, they doubted they'd find him on the streets though. But, they informed every available policeman, keeping the reopened case a secret from the public. They also informed heroes of Beru's appearance, and asked them to keep an eye out. And so, the chase had started. The researchers that had been previously disappointed were now rejoicing at the information. Their guinea pig was back. And it was a secret this time, they could convict him and keep him in a laboratory quite easily. After all, laws could bend in every way as long as enough money is poured. Beru being a minor didn't matter much to them. They just wanted to keep that new breed under surveillance and run tests on it. They thought this matter would be as easy as Pio, how wrong they were. But they will eventually regret their decisions. They did their best to take attention away from Beru's case, all until he disappeared again. It could be said that Beru would have ended up in a laboratory anyway. But now he at least had a chance to grow stronger. Being injected with quirks was still better than being dissected. Well, he still was dissected, but at least he got quirks. For now, Beru was spending his time around the laboratory, his only company being the other undeveloped Nomus. POV Beru this is really getting annoying. Most missions I get are just deliveries now. I feel like the pack boy for a gang all over again. I mean, I'm pretty sure I started as the pack boy for the first three months. 
But I wasn't expecting only to get delivery missions after the first violent one. I mean, so what if I created a sinkhole that made the entire country look for a group of powerful villains? Not my fault. All for one didn't specifically tell me that I couldn't create an unnatural natural disaster. Here we are now, this is completely his responsibility. Yep. Anyway, I've been doing something productive in my free time. I have been scratching the walls trying to perfect my craft of appearing insane. Kaiadai, the old cunt, was quite surprised to see that, but he just chalked it up to me being a bit more sentient than before. Which seems to have pleased him quite a bit. Apparently, having a somewhat intelligent loyal servant is somewhat better than a braindead one. Who would have thought? Right now, I'm doing a regular delivery job. I don't really know what I am always delivering so much. But it's a bit annoying. At least I get to fly around the country. Which is quite nice, especially in the evening. Seeing the sunset while above the clouds is something I didn't think I'd have the pleasure to witness in my past life. Right now though, I am flying above the buildings. I don't really care much about being seen or not. It's not like anyone will stop me, right? Just as those thoughts ran through my head, I heard a loud shout from underneath me. Wait. Young man. The voice was stupidly loud. I looked down curiously. It was a muscly man with yellow hair. He was wearing a pair of jeans and a white t-shirt. He waved over at me. What's this guy's deal? Why does he smell like blood? I flew towards him and landed on the roof, right beside him. I made sure not to damage the building though, collateral damage is really unlike me yeah, the warehouse was all for one's fault. SUP I said as I landed near him. My voice sounds a bit unnatural right now, I haven't used it in a long time, after all, I need my vocal cords to warm up a bit. The man looked beyond shocked. I guess he didn't catch a proper glimpse of me when I was in the air. Good evening young man. I apologize I was a bit startled well, calling me a young man is a bit much, I'm just 13. It's fine used to IT, my reassuring answer seems to have made him feel worse for some strange reason. Um anyway, I just wanted to tell you that you should be more careful with the use of your quirk grate. Just what I needed right now, well at least this is better than pretending not to be able to speak. I just stared at him like I would a mannequin in a clothing store. I am not that uptight an individual, but others would likely give you a fine. He said with an ever-present smile. It seems he was able to brush off his previous embarrassment quite easily. B-U-T-I like F-L-Y-I-N-G I tilted my head a bit. Looking up at this two meter tall man. I think I know him from somewhere I can't remember though. Well, the wind hitting your face might be a nice feeling, but paying a fine isn't. He said as he raised one finger in the air. Suddenly, a large crashing noise was heard on the streets. We both immediately looked down, can you guess what we saw? That's right, a villain. Who would have thunk? They seem to be popping out quite frequently in this country. At any corner of the street, I honestly think their spawn point is randomized, what the fuck am I thinking about? Am I turning into that brat Shigaraki? Young man. Go somewhere safe. I will capture this villain. He jumped up preparing to intercept the villain. But the villain grew in size and turned into a large reptile, easily reaching the height of the apartment I am standing on. The villain seemed to have a quirk that allowed him to turn into a T-Rex. That's fucking awesome. I want that. I could hear a few panicked screams from the streets. Oh wow, I won you not worry everyone. Everything will be fine. Why? Because I am here. Well, that's an entrance if I've ever heard one. My eardrums are certainly not liking it though. The people seem to like it though. It's all might. I could hear a few shouts of recognition. I guess the guy's a hero? He jumped at the dinosaur villain and cocked his fist back. A bit straightforward, but whatever. His punch made contact with the body of the T-Rex. Sending it upwards, but it looked otherwise unscathed. I guess it absorbs impact quite well. The punch was definitely strong, I don't know if I can replicate it properly. But I am more the slashing type anyway, so who cares? All Might jumped towards the flying dinosaur, it seems he plans to keep the fight in the air, probably to avoid damaging the buildings around him. His punches sure could damage the infrastructure quite a bit. But I want the Dino quirk, so I am going to intervene. Just as All Might sent another punch towards the villain, keeping it airborne. I appeared beside him. 
Need H-E-L-P, I didn't really bother hiding the excitement in my tone. He looked shocked once more. Young man. This is dangerous, get back. He sure is acting like a hero. But he does need help, the villain seems to be able to resist blunt damage quite well. To the point where there aren't even any bruises on its skin. All Might should be planning to buy time for someone with an appropriate quirk to appear. He seems to be holding back a bit though, I guess his quirk is a bit destructive. It's F-I-N-E I'll take C-A-R-E of H-I-M, the last part seemed to scare him a bit. But I didn't wait for his response. When the words left my mouth I was already flying towards the airborne dinosaur villain. Turing into a T-Rex, here I come. I extended my hand towards the villain, who looked a bit dazed, probably because of the constant movement, and because of spinning in mid-air a few times. I sunk one of my claws into his skin, not going a lot deeper than that, I flew around him constantly, slashing at him from every direction at unbelievable speeds. I managed to also get a lick of his blood. Which is what I actually wanted to do anyway. That only took me 3 seconds to fill the large body of the dinosaur with gashes and scars. I could hear a few gasps from the streets, I guess I made a bit of a mess huh? The villain fainted and turned to his human form. I guess the pain was a bit too much for him? I didn't let him crash to the ground though. I grabbed him in mid-air and brought him to the ground. Around me were people looking at me with hostility. What? Did they not like the little blood shower? Young man. All Might was right behind me, looking a bit frustrated, mad even. That was too much I will have to arrest you now, he looked sad while saying that. I guess he doesn't really want to, but it is his job I guess. Good L-U-C-K I said, as I prepared to fight this strange man. His hairstyle is pretty sick though. I won't cut that. POV Beru I should still be careful, this guy is definitely stronger than the scrubs I fought before. I mean, I did just see him juggle a dinosaur with the wind pressure from his punches. So he definitely has more punching power than I do. Well, I could likely do something similar, but I assume that wasn't his full power. If that was his full power then I can at least match it. But, somehow, I get the gut feeling that he's holding back, maybe because of the civilians and buildings? He's staring at me, I can see some hesitation from him, the people around us took a great distance. But they aren't really safe, and I don't want my little bit of fun with this bulky guy to end with too many casualties. All Might seems to want to end this quickly though. Because he rushed me at great speeds. I can easily react to it, but I do want to see how my body can handle a hit from him. He reached me, his punch was already approaching my chest by the time he realized I wasn't fighting back. I could see the panic on his face. But it was a bit too late to pull back, he was already in full motion. His punch connected with my chest, sending shockwaves all around us. The flesh underneath my exoskeleton was wriggling and rearranging itself. His punch was definitely strong. But it wasn't enough to move me, I have a decent shock absorption quirk. Even though it still did some damage, it was healed quickly. I have countless quirks by now, my endurance and stamina are almost endless. This guy is strong, but he is really not a good match against me. POV narration the people were pushed back further by All Might's punch. They looked in shock as the villain didn't even budge. The look he gave the symbol of peace was odd, it was almost one of pity. All Might himself didn't really know what to make of the situation. Out of reflex, he went a bit harder than he had meant to. And his opponent didn't even retaliate. In retrospect, it would have been a lot smarter to try and talk things out first. But Beru's playful taunt made All Might think that the insectoid was against the idea. Leading to this awkward situation. S-O-O-R-Y-O-U-A hero, asked the insectoid. Looking at All Might curiously. Beru just wanted to make sure. After all, hurting regular people wasn't really a good feeling to him. And, heroes were basically law enforcement, and that made him more comfortable with it. All Might looked shocked. He was used to everyone knowing of him, especially since his golden age hadn't ended all that long ago. Yes would you please give up, young man? He asked hopefully, taking a step back. He was a bit shocked that his punch hadn't affected Beru, but that wasn't really his full power. And All Might wasn't arrogant enough to think that there weren't people that could put up a fight against him especially in the state he was currently in. He hadn't recovered from his fight with All for One fully yet. And, by his doctor's words, he never will. 
he was only going to be losing his strength as the years passed by, and his injury ate away at his health. But he had at least taken down his arch nemesis. Now, the one in front of him wasn't even a person he'd classify as a villain. But he had done something quite egregious. Taking care of a villain in that fashion would have been controversial even for a licensed hero to do. Especially in front of such a big crowd, and this man had done it without any license. Which technically led to him being portrayed as a villain in front of the law. Well, he would be called a vigilante by the media, but the law didn't like this type of activity at all. NAH responded Beru, as he dusted off his chest a bit. His exoskeleton didn't reveal even the slightest bend at the force all might have applied. In their standoff, a news crew had already arrived on the scene. As it was customary whenever All Might was present anywhere. The police also arrived and dragged the people away from the site. Taping off an area around the standoff. The symbol of peace didn't want to prolong this matter further. He once again rushed Beru. This time, the insectoid copied his movements, matching everything about them, from posture to movement speed. He met All Might's punch head on. His fist striking All Might's with great force. Both of them were being serious this time. The shockwave of that clash shook the entire district around them, as the people were pushed back further, and the police were forced to expand their circle. After a short second, both of them started sending flurries of punches, their hands becoming blurs even for the high-speed camera of the news crew. The cameraman struggled to keep his balance against the waves of wind, creating tremors in the area. Baru matched every single one of All Might's moves, leading to a collective shock to set in. No one expected a random villain to exert this much force. They were quite used to All Might taking out most of them quickly and with ease. All Might himself was getting less and less comfortable by the second. As he realized that Beru seemed less concentrated on the fight as he was on imitating him. Every breath, every subtle shift in posture, every muscle twitch. As All Might ramped up the speed of his deadly barrage, so did Beru. One thing that should be mentioned Beru was by no means a regular fighter. Everyone has talent after all, and his talent happened to be just that. Everything just flowed for him when he danced around. In his past life, he craved for that flow, the smoothness of it, the feeling of satisfaction as he stared at his bloodied fist or weapon. It had been a while since he felt like that, it was hard for him to find a matching opponent. He hadn't for it properly in a very long time. Even the bank robbers were only cannon fodder to him, even though he was five years old at the time. Currently, Beru was finding the situation thrilling. His blood was boiling as a lost passion was quickly reappearing. All Might was finding himself matched, he decided to stop holding back completely. Seeing as his opponent was not even close to giving in. His punches got stronger, faster, packing more and more power. He slowly started overwhelming Beru, who could match his speed, but his lacking power led to him being pushed back. Yet, the childish joy in his gestures didn't let off. As his wounds, his wear and tear were all being healed instantly, and most of the impact was being absorbed by his quirk. The fight raged on. The street and buildings around them were quite in ruins by now. As the two of them had forgotten any semblance of holding back. Beru didn't really use his claws, but he wanted a frontal bout, he wanted to use the weapons that his opponent had. After all, that made the fight a lot more satisfactory. Eventually, they missed each other's fist. All Might managed to send a punch into Beru's stomach, and Beru sent one to All Might's chest. Both were sent flying backwards, Beru did a flip in midair and dug his legs into the concrete, coming to a stop around 10 meters away. His wounds were healing already, although he was getting exhausted. All Might was sent further, as he had no impact absorbing quirk, and he also didn't have claws to dig into the ground. He was sent into a building that had yet to fall down, around 170 meters away from the initial clash. A news helicopter had already reached the scene. Broadcasting the fight throughout Japan instantly. It quickly took to appear on every screen, the strength of the villain shaking the populace. All Might dragged himself out of the collapsing building. Stumbling a bit as he did so. He was tired, a lot more than Beru, he was on a timer too. Thankfully for him, he was not close to being done yet. He couldn't let the nation see him in such a sorry state after all. He rose up, facing Beru once more. As the bystanders cheered from a distance. Yeah. Take down that monster. All Might. Go. Plus Ultra. 
His fans were cheering him on, but he found it a bit strange. The fight needed to come to an end eventually though and the next few moments would decide the outcome. POV narration the fight had clearly damaged their surroundings greatly. Yet, All Might couldn't help but feel that the crowd was being a bit harsh towards his opponent. Sure, he didn't look all that righteous. But, the man avoided hitting any vital spots. And, he hadn't used his claws one bit, meaning he didn't actually wish to maim or injure the symbol of peace. He was just excited to fight an opponent on equal footing. Something that could have been understood had the situation not painted him in a bad light. All Might had felt strangely during that fight. He knew that any moment, Baru could have just unclenched his own fists, and the insectoid's claws would have torn through his arms with ease. Eventually, the symbol of peace also got lost in the fight, his opponent's excitement rubbing off on him. Even though All Might had never been the type to search for fights, but this bout felt more like a spar than anything. Although they could have done it under different circumstances, there had been no casualties caused by their exchange, every building was swiftly evacuated when the police arrived. They had a perfect response and evacuation protocol for an emergency of this nature. They were currently prepared to apprehend the villain at a moment's notice. But All Might didn't consider the person in front of him a villain. He simply couldn't bring himself to see him as one. As the hero walked out of the building he looked at his opponent with a bit of pity. He didn't like the way they called him a monster. Usually, his opponents would simply be called villains. But, due to Beru's appearance, he was just called a monster. It was a bit strange to see. And it would be a lie to say that Beru didn't find it a bit disheartening. But it still seemed to bother All Might more than it did the insectoid preteen. Let's wrap things up, said Beru in his regular distorted tone. All Might just nodded, their next exchange would be the last one. It seemed like Beru also started feeling a bit bad about wrecking the neighborhood. All Might prepared a punch, going beyond everything he had previously thrown, a smash powerful enough to take down just about everybody. Meanwhile, Beru's right arm unnaturally started swelling up, his previous slender arm became large enough to match All Might's. They both dashed forwards at the same time. Just as their punches were to meet, All Might shouted out. United States of Smash. His voice alone created vibrations in the air, his punch met Beru's fist. It was at this point that Beru realized that he had somewhat miscalculated how much force the hero in front of him was supposedly able to exert. His fist was quickly crushed, his exoskeleton pushing into his skin as it mangled his overgrown muscles, and blood started sprouting out everywhere. Yet, he kept his posture, the shockwave from their clash blew away everything around them. Creating a furious tornado and forcing the news helicopter to fly further away from the clash. Beru was slowly being pushed back, as more and more of his arm was being mangled by the brute force of the symbol of peace. Yet, there was no pain present in the insectoid's eye. His excitement hadn't died down even a bit. No, he was even more excited than at the beginning. One strike, one single strike had been enough to nullify his shock absorption and crush his bones and muscles. All Might pushed forward as Beru's arm completely let off. Beru was pushed backwards at great speeds. He flew above the buildings and into the clouds, dispelling the ones that had gathered due to the tornado. But he wasn't anywhere near done. No, he was built to last. He unfurled his wings, his ant wings flapped around at unimaginable speeds and broke his upward momentum, staring down at the ruins of his fight. Looking at his side, he could see the news helicopter, their camera focused on him as he stopped his arm from healing. It hadn't been just his arm that was affected by the powerful punch. No, no, the damage that was done was quite extensive. All of his organs were in turmoil, the right side of his ribsage was mostly pulverized, and his lungs were perforated by his bones as if by shrapnel. He stared at the sweating cameraman for a second or two, contemplating whether to leave or have one last chat with his opponent. After a short briefing with his own mind, he chose the latter. Dashing back down to where the clash had happened. All Might himself had taken some damage as well, his muscles were torn on different parts from the resistance and the strain. POV Beru well, this has been quite eventful it's been a long time since I've actually felt threatened. All for one was the first person in the world to make me feel like that. And now this man although I'm quite sure I'd be able to defeat him if I actually tried. 
He doesn't seem to be cut from the same cloth as all for one, I have no actual reason to kill him. If he was a criminal I would have killed him though, those are free game for me. Now that I think about it. This is also the first time a fight's managed to tire me out good f-i-g-h-t, I said as I looked at the panting hero. My arm hung limply by my side, the bleeding had stopped, but it was only healing slowly. After all, I don't need to bother hurriedly healing myself at the cost of more stamina when the fight is already over. Young man this is such a mess he shook his head and took a frustrated sigh. I just now noticed that there was steam coming out of his body. S-O-R-R-Y can't be caught Y-E-T, I said in a bit of a cheerful tone. Maybe I could have escaped, but I also wanted to fight this guy, so I guess I'm double guilty? He sighed, but he didn't move from his place to try and apprehend me again. Is he really that tired? I guess the last strike could have killed me if aimed at different spots. Although I could have still just dodged it. Young man plea his words were interrupted by a scream, both of our heads bolted to the source, a woman was stuck under a pile of rubble. It seems their evacuation wasn't quite that great. Pete please. Help me. She shouted out in distress. Looking up, I could see the building above her slowly tilting and threatening to collapse on top of her. I looked at all might, but he was still unmoving, I guess he's far too tired for that huh? He even looked at me pleadingly. I just sighed, I guess I'll do his job for now, but he low me one yay, this is definitely not a mess caused by no one other than myself, I dashed towards the woman as she screamed in fear when seeing me approach her. Quite rude, usually people aren't all that picky on who saves them, but whatever. I showed the claws on my left hand, as they grew to be around 1 meter each. I took a few swipes at a great speed, I cut the entire building to pieces and the rubble above her as well. The pressure from those moves also pushed all of the rubble away from the woman. She closed her eyes, I guess she was expecting herself to die? Oh well, she's relatively safe now, there's no impending threat to her life. So I guess that's that. I reappeared in front of All Might, who looked quite shocked at the way I had demolished that building. You owe me a drink was the last thing I said to him before flying off. I quickly flew above the few clouds that were left and went to finish my delivery mission. I had almost forgotten about it, honestly what a fun day. POV narration the nation was shaken, seeing a villain fight the symbol of peace wasn't anything new, many arrogant evildoers challenged All Might. But, the one that fought the NR.1 hero this time was by no means the same as the others. His monstrous appearance remained imprinted into the minds of the populace. But what was more frightening was his strength, he faced down the symbol of peace and fought him on equal standing. Something that not many had managed to do in the past. Not only that, he had survived a powerful attack from all might, and didn't even appear to be shaken when his arm was turned to mush by the hero. His appearance and strength lead the media to call him, the arch-nemesis of the symbol many articles sprouted around the subject, aided by the fact that the villain ultimately escaped capture. There was also quite a lot of confusion regarding his nature, many refusing to believe that he was evil since he saved a life after that fight. But many decided to conveniently ignore that part, as they believed that All Might would have saved that woman regardless. That and the fact that the villain fled in the direction of the building, meaning it was likely in his way too. It was quite the stretch of the imagination, but they wished to advertise the fact that the symbol of peace had met his match. The news emboldened villains momentarily, but it also made a few heroes more active. They saw the appearance of Beru as either a chance to grow stronger or gain more fame. Endeavor burned down villains with fervor, despising the fact that the distance between him and his rival was so large. He wanted to prove himself by taking down Beru as well. Then there was Mirko, the rabbit hero, who saw Beru's appearance as a chance to rise in the ranks and become stronger. Many wanted a chance to fight Beru, but All Might himself saw the situation differently, he considered Beru to be much stronger than what he had shown. It was to the point where he didn't believe that he would be able to win against him in his current state. Even if some news articles called All Might the winner of that fight, the symbol of peace, didn't see that battle as a win. Rather, he found it a bit concerning. Well, he didn't think Beru was a threat to society, so he wasn't exactly panicking, but he still didn't like how he had phrased an apology during their fight. The way he said it made All Might think that the insectoid was planning something. He quickly announced a people he trusted of his doubts. Mainly, Nezu, 
The principal of UA, and Night Eye, a clairvoyant detective that used to be All Might's sidekick at some point. They were both intrigued by this villain that had appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Night Eye was quick to dig up his identity, there weren't many people with that appearance born in Japan after all, after finding out his history, they had difficulty piecing together what had happened to him. Nezu was the first out of the three to come to a conclusion on the matter. It was also the one that the police had reached in their initial investigation. A child trafficking ring. All Might winched at those words. First off, he found it odd that his opponent was a child. A child had been strong enough to fight him on an equal standing. Not only that, he had casually ignored getting severely injured. It also made him feel disgusted with himself. He had likely disabled a child. He almost vomited when learning of it. His hands twitched at the thought of injuring a regular 13-year-old child. Even if Beru was anything but normal, it still made him feel like he was trash. He wasn't wrong for thinking he had disabled Beru, that injury was extremely serious. That hand was rendered unusable. He had no way of knowing that Beru had an extremely powerful healing factor. One so powerful that it rendered the damage done null. It was to the point where Beru considered the injury more of an inconvenience than anything. Now, had All Might aimed for the head, things would have been a lot direr. Beru might have died, or just been captured in a coma. Regardless, it wouldn't have been a great result for the insectoid. The three of them decided to keep Beru's identity to themselves, as they didn't want to bring more attention to this case. The police also definitely realized that this was Beru. And since they didn't make any move, neither did Nezu, Night Eye and All Might. One person, however, was more surprised than everybody else. All for One had sent his most powerful subordinate on an easy mission. All of the delivery missions he had been sending him on were to test his cognitive abilities. Decision making wasn't something he expected the Nomu to still have. But he found out that Beru had basic sentience. Although his loyalty was not altered in any way by it. Still, he saw his creation take on the accursed symbol of peace. It lost, but it was still a close matchup. The fight gave all for one a strange feeling. He hadn't expected Beru to be that powerful. But he didn't consider it a bad thing. No, he saw it as a positive. Even if the Nomu acted a bit odd at the end. That might have been due to an order that he had given Beru. To make sure not to kill anyone. It was a simple command, he wanted to rouse as little attention as possible after the warehouse disaster. And Beru saving that woman made all for one think that he was respecting the orders. He took the incident as both a win and a loss. A win because it proved the strength of his creation, and a loss because now the world knew about it. Thankfully, Beru didn't use many different quirks in that battle, so the police and heroes wouldn't be able to tell of all for one's involvement in the matter. Overall, the appearance of this new villain shook Japan. It made people warier, and it made heroes more occupied. POV Beru well, that was an eventful day. Too bad I now have no choice but to waste my time lazing around and scratching walls. It's been two years already since I was given a mission. I'm already 15, and I managed to annoy the doctor by turning the walls into an unrecognizable mess. I am also around 1.9 meters tall. Which is quite the escalation from my previous average height. Well, it's not really entering in human levels, but it's still unusual I no longer getting assigned any missions, mainly because a lot of them end with me causing a scene. I haven't really gotten any new quirks either, but I can't really do much because all for one is watching me closely lately. My previous encounter with that hero made me realize that people in this world can get crazy strong. I don't really know how that all might guy would fare against all for one, but I'm pretty sure I need to prepare a bit more to take down the arrogant Watt. I mean, there's not much I can do besides gather quirks like their Pokemon, and allow them to strengthen each other in my body, till I believe I am strong enough to ruin that cunt's life. I've been doing a lot of quirk training in the past two years, getting to know some of the stuff in me. It wasn't suspicious, as I avoided using what I found to be too strong, and just practiced a bit of the basic stuff. I am also sentient enough to try and start getting used to my strength now. So that didn't arouse any suspicion I wonder how else I should pass the time. Well, seems I need wonder no more, as a black portal just opened up in front of me. I remember all for one having this quirk, or at least a similar one. Out of it came none other than that brat Shigaraki. Nomu. 
Teacher said you should stand by me from now on. Great. Fucking great. Can I kill myself now? I already got reincarnated once, maybe I'll get a better shot next life. Well, I'll deal with it, this isn't the first time I've had to deal with annoying people yeah, follow me. I still don't really like this kid's tone, but attacking him would kinda ruin my cover. By kinda I mean completely. I followed the kid through the gate and into a nice looking bar. I might actually like this more than I thought at first. Another Nomu was present here, all for one called him Kurajiri. He's the one with the portal quirk. Shigaraki didn't stick around for long, going upstairs and playing stupid computer games. Meanwhile, I did what I do best. Get shitfaced, I don't really need to be intelligent to drink myself into an alcohol-induced coma right? Well, my only obstacle is this misty asshole. You can't drink. You're underage. Ha, jokes on you, I shouldn't even have a concept of the legal drinking age. I can just indulge myself. I walked by the portal guy and grabbed a bottle of whiskey. I used my claw to cut the top clean off and chugged it like it was water from the holy grail. Then it came to me. I cannot even get drunk properly because of my constitution. As that realization washed over me I just stared blankly at the empty bottle, it seems I truly have no escape, Kurajiri finally reacted to me drinking, teleporting the bottle out of my hand, I just let go of it dejectedly. Then he said. What a mess shouldn't you be near Shigaraki or something? Great, now he wants to get rid of me too. And I can't even cope with my existential dread. Get drunk, it seems that I must accept my fate. I walked upstairs to watch that brat play this world's equivalent of Final Fantasy. Jesus, he is bad. I think even Johnny, the lobotomized carrier boy from my old gang, has more tactical thinking when it comes to games. We needed something to do in between important stuff, oh well, I can't really complain. I'm not exactly an expert myself. I remember losing just about every game of golf I ever attended. It's a tragic thing really being bad at games is at least something I can use to relate to this pipsqueak. Haha. <laughs> so easy what the fuck is he talking about? He just fought a mini boss, lost all of his party, and most of his consumables well, being delusional is a great coping mechanism. At least I have something to critique while staying around this kid ha. Huh? Look at the way these scrubs are playing. Total noobs. Oh lord, he's changed to playing online games oh, it's actually this world's equivalent of Xco. A game I am actually accustomed to. I remember playing it a bit with Jhonny the lobotomite. But he's playing with bots who's he talking about? Haha. <laughs> Take that headshot Albert. I guess I should stop making fun of the disabled, Shigaraki, and go back to trying to drink myself into a coma Nomu. Go and get me a soda. Oh, and some popcorn. Good, I can just ignore his orders because popcorn and soda aren't really things I'm accustomed to. I left the room, trying to spare my eyes the sight of his excruciating gamma play. I'm pretty sure those bots were on easy mode too I reached the first floor, Kurajiri was moping around wiping some glasses, even though no one is even coming to this place. Maybe he's just programmed to not be idle? Well, not like he's a robot, but still. I don't really see a reason to wash these already clean shot glasses. I grabbed a bottle of beer and whiskey. Maybe mixing them up will be able to numb my mind a bit spoilers, it didn't work. It seems my body is quite resistant to ethanol poisoning Kurajiri just stared at me oddly, but didn't think much of it. It's not like I carefully open the bottles and drink with class. I cut the bottles open and shove the liquid down my greasy throat, with the grace of a hairy viking. The only complaint Kurajiri had was that I am making a mess of the place. But I think differently. I was just feeling bad that he didn't have enough work, wiping the same, already shiny, shot glasses. So I decided to help him out by giving him some stuff to clean. He should be thankful POV Baru hahaha. <laughs> so funny. It's been around two weeks of trying to get drunk and failing. Get this, I now need to do missions for that shitty kid. Why? Well, because all for one wants his pupil to gain some experience giving commands and missions. But he doesn't feel like losing too many POPLE cause Shigaraki is a shit strategist. So he sends me because he knows I won't be in any danger. Now, Shigaraki has realized that I usually just ignore his fetch quests. Like bringing him groceries and other stuff. So he decided to send me to hunt down another villain. Why? I don't know. 
but he wants me to find and kill him. The villain isn't really anything special. Just a guy that can grow tails out of his body and use them to fight well, I might take his quirk, but that's different. I'm sure I can use it better than him. I walked around Hosu City, looking for the villain in every corner of it. Not really helpful, because I couldn't find anything about him. At least the first two days. You can guess that Shigaraki instantly complained to his DADDYA foe. Who told him that having patience will be helpful or some fatherly bullshit advice he took out of his 10-page guidebook on how to be a parental figure. Today, however, I seem to have found my target. So how exactly did I end up being chased around by a human torch looking to burn me to the ground? Well the villain was already fighting a few heroes when I reached him. He turned out to be much stronger than I initially thought. His tails seemed to be very resistant, maybe as much as my exoskeleton even. He could endlessly grow and expand them. Making him an extremely dangerous opponent. Well, not for me. He is far slower than me, I think All Might would only need a punch to take this loser out. But he seemed to be winning. I was about to swoop in and perform a perfect superhero landing to decapitate him with my legs. But something else stopped me. A wave of flames hit the guy as he was trying to finish off a hero. He was a bit burned, but managed to get his tail to block the incoming flames. I looked at the source. A muscly man dressed in a skin-tight black suit. He had a flaming beard and mustache and red hair. Now, I've seen some cool stuff lately. But this is the first time I've seen a flaming beard. And I must say I am impressed. I don't know this guy, but he's cool. I want his quirk now. Well, only because it looks strong. I didn't get All Might's quirk because I already have enough strength enhancers. But I barely have any flame stuff the only fire quirk I have is the one from the Weeaboo Swordsman in that random warehouse. Unfortunately, a fire beard won't look that great on me, but being able to use flames like that seems dope. The tail guy looked panicked all of a sudden. He Endeavor I guess I learned the hero's name thanks to this guy? Endeavor, I guess, huffed as flames left his nostrils. Yep, I want that quirk. Well, I think I should thank him accordingly. I rushed him from above. A blade grew from my elbow as I landed and split the villain in two. The heroes around me looked shocked, I did appear out of nowhere for them, I guess. I dragged a finger on the blade and discreetly licked a bit of the blood. It's a bit nasty, but hey. Power is power, I'm not gonna cry about it. You. Endeavor rushed me, using his flames to send himself towards me as I slowly got up. He put his hands together and released a concentrated stream of fire towards me. Now, I may have some resistance to heat. But I don't really feel like letting my insides boil right now. So I flew above the attack, avoiding it completely as it scorched the body of the tail villain. The other injured heroes dragged themselves away. I looked at the hero, deciding on the best course of action. I decided to use my speed against him, I rushed him, appearing behind him instantly. My hand was already raised in the air as my claws were prepared to dig into his back. Endeavor reacted faster than I expected though, releasing flames all around him. I swiped his back with my claws, as my body started heating up due to his flames. He can't really burn me, as my exoskeleton can't really get burned easily. But my body heating up isn't going to help me. I retreated a bit. And I decided to do a bold move. Punching towards him and using air cannon minimally making the shockwave look like it was released by my punch. I blew away Endeavor's flames as he covered his eyes. The wound on his back was already cauterized, this guy has a lot of pain tolerance, I don't really want to reveal how many quirks I have. All for one knows of my air cannon, but I don't like others knowing everything about my abilities. So I decided to mask whatever ability I could. I licked Endeavor's already dried blood from my claws. His fire almost evaporated the little blood I managed to draw from him. But it seems like I don't need to draw even more, as that little bit of dried blood was enough for me to assimilate his powers. Again, I won't be using them, not right now anyway, what a monster the hero said through gritted teeth. So M-E-A-N I guess he's realized he can't beat me from that little exchange. Still, I wonder how long he why hiya. That was all I heard as a kick came my way. It was aiming for my head, I just raised my hand and blocked it with my forearm. A guy dressed in white armor screaming like an idiot was the one that just tried to kick me. 
His leg seems to be accelerated by some strange tubes coming out of his calves. Well, his hit wasn't all that bad, maybe 30% of what that all might guy could normally do? Maybe less? Well, I kind like the tubes, I will take his quirk too. I can't really see his face because of his helmet, but I can guess he is quite shocked at how little his attack did. I turned around a bit, twirling my body and punching the armored hero directly in the face. It instantly broke his helmet as blood splattered on my fist. He was sent flying into a building. Raising a cloud of dust and breaking a few windows. I didn't put everything I had in that hit. But I still put a bit of strength behind it. And, now that his blood is already on my knuckle, there's no reason for me to refuse a freak work. I lapped it up. I gave one last look towards the heroes. Endeavor was looking like he wasn't done yet, but I am. I flew off instantly. When I was above the clouds, I decided to try out my new powers. First off, tails. Two veiny tails came out of my back, they were quickly covered in my exoskeleton. They look quite sick. But I don't know how often I will use them I retracted them into my body. Now, the fire ability. I raised my palm as the temperature around me rose, I released a gout of flames large enough to burn down an entire park. This is fun, but it seems like I'll have to get used to the temperature. Now, for my next and last power. I remember the guy having pipes on his calves. But I shouldn't really have that restriction, at least I don't think so. When using that quirk, it seems like my calves become engines of sorts. But it also seems like I can grow pipes everywhere on my body. I decided to grow them on my back. They should give me a little boost when flying now, it's time to go back to the bar and drink a bit. Why? To a successful mission of course. Not that I need a reason to drink, POV narration two years, after the fight with All Might. Baru had disappeared for two entire years. Nezu didn't know if he should call that a good thing or a bad one. On one hand, Nezu hoped that maybe the mutant quirk child escaped his captors and went into hiding. From All Might's account, he was by no means being controlled by anyone. Although, Nezu didn't disregard the possibility of All Might being wrong. He was smart enough to not take any opinion at face value. Still, All Might's observations held some weight. On the other hand Nezu thought that maybe Beru's captors weren't all too pleased with his encounter with the symbol of peace. And they decided to either get rid of him or incarcerate him permanently. And that would make saving Beru much harder. After all, All Might was currently still determined to help the insectoid teen. Even with his slowly decreasing strength. Now, his appearance only exacerbated problems. Further cementing his image as a villain to the public. He had appeared, instantly killed a villain, then proceeded to injure the NR.2 hero. But the bad things don't stop there. As he also knocked out another hero, by hitting him square in the face. There wasn't much Nezu could do to repair his public image at this point. That was their initial plan. All Might convinces the young teen to come with him. While Nezu and Night Eye make sure his record is clean. It would have been hard even then, but it was still doable. He hadn't really killed anyone, at least there was no proof of him doing so. But now it was almost impossible, as he did it on live television. Nezu could only curse the ever-present media that needed to insert itself in any situation, and complicate it to such extents. After all, if that was only witnessed by a few people, he could have negotiated their silence. Now that was impossible. Nezu still couldn't really bring himself to blame the insectoid teen. As he was likely just doing someone else's bidding now, he could just sigh and continue doing his paperwork. All Might wasn't any closer to catching Beru anyway. He didn't want to deal with the logistics of that already, although thinking about the amount of work was certainly discouraging. POV Beru where does the line between sobriety and intoxication start, and where does it end? I'm sure I drank enough alcohol to put your average Russian man in a coma, but I don't even get tipsy. And yes, I am aware of how bold that statement is. Lately, I've been thinking of dancing. Might help me with self-expression or something like that. I think I read that in one of Kurajiri's magazines. Why does he keep that boring stuff around? I don't know. I just peek over his shoulder when he's reading. After all, I am still supposed to act like an animal. Oh yeah, I managed to learn why Shigaraki wanted the tail guy dead. Apparently, when he went to the mall, the tail guy just happened to be robbing a store that he wanted to enter. And that made him mad, 
He remembered the guy's face. And sent me after him. Great. Honestly, I shouldn't have expected less of the master strategist Shigaraki. Let's send the deadly biological weapon to go after that random store robber you once saw. How dare he mildly inconvenience you. Still, at least I can amuse myself in this situation. It's much better than remodeling the walls of Kaidai's laboratory. Although, it's annoying how often I have to get suspicion off my back. All for one finds my sudden interest in alcohol interesting. Amusing even, at least I think so. Haven't seen the guy's face in years. But his voice sounded amused. He and Kaidai seem to think it's just me liking the taste or something. Although Kurajiri is looking at me weirdly all the time. I think he's realized there's a pattern to my drinking. I always have a conversation with Shigaraki before trying to drink myself into a coma. Regardless, he's received instructions from the big man HIMSELFAFO to restock the drinks regularly. Finally, all for one doing something good. I'm still going to kill him later though, I still need to figure out his plans before starting to break them apart and slowly break him down. It might take a while, I am many things, but a sound strategist isn't one of them. Well, I'm still better than whatever Shigaraki is, but that's like comparing myself to a stewing pot of wasted brain cells. Thankfully, I have a few mind-enhancing quirks on my belt. Giving me some degree of confidence in myself. The only thing that is missing from this bar is some music. I miss Queen, I loved swinging my golf club to the rhythm of his songs, oh well, I still have a lot of Thinomu. Come here. Do I even need to comment on that? Is there a need for me to express my desire to try my hand at reincarnation once more? I walked upstairs. Leaving my comfortable bar stool and entering Shigaraki's shitty masturbatorium I stared at him, he was still playing his games. Which I will refrain from commenting about from now on, it saves some of the fried up neurons I still have, I need you to go rob this bank. Bring me money, money. He showed me pictures of the stuff he wanted, mainly, badly drawn money and stacks of gold ingots. He also showed me pictures of the bank. I feel like I am back in kindergarten, planning to shoplift candy with my crew, but I'm pretty sure I made more detailed plans back then now, I am not exactly an expert. But I am pretty sure the bank he wants me to rob is a deposit box bank, the type that keeps valuables for the clients, so there are chances for there to be neither money nor gold ingots in their sure boss. I'll go right away. Anything to get away from this place. I looked a bit at the photo, pretending to study it a bit. Then I left for the bank. It's not like it's difficult to find, there are only like three banks in Hosu, and the one he showed me is the only deposit box bank. Now that I think about it the last time I was in a bank was when I fought some robbers. Oh, the irony. Well, I guess that if I am to do something I might as well do it right. POV Baru okay, so the first thing a true bank robber needs to do is to make sure they know the layout of the place they're supposed to steal from. I took my time, scouting out the place from a distance and from above the clouds. Checking the guards shifts and patrol patterns. Sure, they might not be 100% accurate at all times, but they should still give me a basic understanding of everyone's position. Currently, there is no security posted on the roof, but the cameras seem to have that place covered properly. Actually, the cameras seem to cover every angle of this building. Thankfully, this bank has a security room somewhere in it, I managed to draw out a layout of the rooms and employees in my mind. Now, I need to make an entry plan, and, you know what? I'll just cut down the wall of the security room from the outside, take out the cameraman, and continue from there. This wasn't exactly a proper choice when I was a regular human, but nothing's stopping me now. Then again, I want to do this without even being seen oh yeah, good thing I can turn invisible. I mean, at first, I just ate a chameleon and could match the color of my surroundings. But I'm pretty sure a few of the quirks I have enhanced all of my abilities. So I guess I don't need to break a wall to get into the security room. But the safe itself might be an issue. I don't have enough knowledge about security systems to know what exactly triggers an alarm. So, I need to get rid of the power supply for that room. Causing a power outage might work, but I'll only have like 5 to 10 seconds before the backup energy source for the security systems automatically turns itself on. Now, that was usually the case, I don't know if it's the same here, but I should still be able to loot half of the deposit boxes clean in 5 seconds. 
It will take longer to throw everything in my bag than to rip open the boxes themselves. I need a way to quickly store everything away. Korajiri's quirk would be a godsend here, but I can't really eat mist, and trying to munch at his real body would be a bit suspicious. But I will take his quirk as soon as I start breaking apart all for one's life. Now, I have yet to figure out how to take everything away quickly. But I have another solution, the reserve power supply seems to be located in the basement. It's a generator that is unconnected to anything else. And Jesus it's great to have x-ray vision. Quarks are really good, imagine all of the possibilities with this one so, final plan. I take away the power to the entire district. I turned myself invisible and weaken one of the cables with my claws. A bit of electricity passes through me, but that's not that big of a hassle. Then I rushed into the bank, still invisible, and entered the basement. I didn't obviously break the emergency generator, I simply extended my claw and used it to sever the wires connecting it to the safe room. Again, X-ray vision is my most useful tool in this situation. After that, I strolled in front of the safe door well, I didn't think about this part, did I? Fuck me. Well then, I will do what a true professional does, I will wing it from here. I need to break this huge door without making any sound. And I know just the way the huge steel door is locked with a few steel cylinders that go into proper places. I just need to cut those cylinders properly for the door to swing itself open. Ah and done. Thankfully, my claws can easily cut through steel. There wasn't any resistance, so there is no sound to be made. It's kind of like cutting bread. I quietly entered the safe whilst everyone was still panicking about the electricity outage. Inside, I quickly got to work and gently ripped open the locks of all the deposit boxes, placing everything that resembled what Shigaraki said he wanted. I don't really want to take more than needed. Well, a few rings missing won't hurt anybody oh, and that necklace will look awesome in my collection alright. It's decided, I will just take everything. I can decide what I want to keep later. The rest I can just fly by and drop back at their front door. I obviously didn't bother taking any family heirlooms and whatnot. I don't feel like looking through photo albums. In the end, I think I managed to find at least 3 million yen. Which should be around $30,000? Maybe? It's not a lot, but I also found a gold ingot. So Shigaraki can shut his mouth. I left the bank the same way I entered, invisible and through the front door. The employees are bound to realize that the safe door can't really be locked anymore. So they will call the police soon. Now, time to go on a random rooftop and look through the loot. In the end, I decided to keep a few valuables. I will place them in a stash in the woods that only I will know about. As for the rest I just threw the sack of goods through the roof window. I am a generous person. That all took like 4 minutes. The robbery itself took me around 30 seconds, the rest was me picking the loot. After that, I quickly flew off into the mountain range. I just picked one at random. And left the package in the trunk of a tree. Ha! Loot secured! That's a successful robbery if I've ever seen one. Now, to go and give Shigaraki his cut. I flew to the bar and entered Shigaraki's room, letting the bag down on the floor. He quickly took it and started rifling through it. That's all. Great, I bet he will somehow blame me for his shitty planning. Why is it so little? He looked at me, I don't really know what he's expecting from me. I am not capable of speech in their eyes. Ugh. I'll have to tell teacher that the tool he lent me is defective great, you go and do that. I'll just go back to the bar to sit down on my favorite stool. And just like that, I am back to my never-ending quest of avoiding sobriety. POV Baru it's already been 3 months since that brat got mad at me. It's been mostly quiet, with me going to the forest and testing out quirk combinations. The bank robbery went so well that no one could even pin it on me. Security footage didn't catch me, and there's no eyewitness. Shigaraki complained to all for one about the little amount of money I brought him. But that didn't really get anywhere, big boy all for one has other stuff to do than hearing his disciple cry about the lack of money. I don't even know why this brat needs money. Did he start playing gacha games or something? Well, whatever. There are some things I could do now. I could go and try to pick up some chicks. I always had my way with words oh yeah. I can't, cause I am the most wanted villain in Japan or some shit. Apparently, the guy that I fought with was a bit more popular than I thought. 
And me giving him a good fight was seen as a villainous action. Boohoo, people got scared, now I'm a villain. I didn't even do anything bad. Most of the property damage was done by that guy. My punches mostly absorbed the shock of his, but I didn't actually release shockwaves of my own well, not as many as he did. So even that can't really be pinned on me. It was a mutual effort. And I even helped that one civilian. No one on the news seems to be talking about that though maybe because I cut up that one villain in the beginning? Well, I didn't really kill him, I even held back quite a bit. Or maybe it was the other villain with the tails. Or maybe all the warehouse people I killed. Did they finally find out about that? Could be anybody really, hmm, I guess I can only pick up chicks that are also villains? Nah, I don't dig these types. I've had my fair share of dangerous women in my past life. From daughters of heads of the Italian mafia to hitmen sent after the boss, even the occasional junkie. Some were good in bed too. But they always had some weird shit in mind. One tried to kill me, another tried to cut off strips of my flesh, she said she wanted us to both eat a few bites. Heh, I remember one that was obviously trying to get information out of me. Well, I still slept with her, but I didn't talk much and, the worst of all, one lady actually asked for a commitment. You can guess that I dived out the window the second she took a bathroom break. Simply put, I don't really trust chicks with a criminal background. Words of wisdom, if she's a beauty and a criminal, there's a 50 50 chance she's also bad shit insane. And I always lost that coin flip. So what should I do now? I looked at Kurajiri, he looked back at me, waiting for me to finish my bottle of vodka. Nomu. Great, I guess I won't get to finish it now. I walk towards the Krybaby's room again. When will he mature? I mean, he probably won't get to, I don't think I'll wait that long. When I entered his room, the usual smell of stale air and expired personality hit me in the face. He had another picture in his hands. I want you to kill this person. He shoved that picture into my face. I really don't like his attitude. I ripped the photo out of his hand, a small piece of it was ripped off, but I didn't care. I just looked at the photo for a bit. This guy has been getting in the way of our informant and recruiter for a while now, what? Shigaraki actually asking me to do something productive is this a prank? Where are the cameras at? I need you to kill him. He goes by muscular. He's a villain, like us, but he's a bit too uncontrollable to keep alive, he is actually giving me concise information. What is this supposed to mean? Is he changing? We don't know where he is, we just know he's in the city, but you should be able to find him easily enough, why is he so serious all of a sudden? Just yesterday he was complaining about the way his T-E-A-M-M-A-T-E-S box played. Now here he is, acting logical and compassed, his quirk allows him to have complete control over his muscle mass, expand it and strengthen himself. Alright, that's all. Get to it. Oh, I get it. This is a mission from all for one, I guess he decided to give it to me through Shigaraki to see how his disciple would handle the situation. I mean, it's not that I don't believe he would be able to change, but this is a bit too fast. I left the room to look for this muscular guy. Who names themselves muscular? He sounds like the worst type of gym bro. The one that Loki takes steroids and brags at every given opportunity. And makes opportunities when he can't find them, still, finding a single man in a city will take me a bit. Much like it took me a few days to find the tail guy. Now that I think about it I have yet to actually use his quirk in a fight. This is a good enough opportunity. I can also take this Jim Bro's quirk, since it sounds like it could go well with a few of my own. I quickly flew out, scouting the entire city and looking through every dirty alleyway. But I failed to find anything. So, I decided to expand my range by a few dozen kilometers. Checking the villages around, just in case. And, bingo, first TR why not really, this is like the fourth village I check, but give me a break I'm tired. He seemed to be in an altercation with two other, weirdly dressed people. I've come to call all people that dress oddly heroes, so I'll call them that for now. I looked at them for a bit, a man and a woman. They seem to have water-related quirks, trying to keep the villain at bay with streams of water. But Muscular isn't really having any of that. He's brute-forcing his way through the tides with a sadistic smile on his face I don't really like it. I can already tell I won't be friends with this guy. He seems to be winning. He managed to punch the man, who was sent flying into one of the houses. 
The woman is also about to take a punch, but she looks hot, so I'll save H.E.R. Hey, at least I'm honest. Just as his hand was about to reach her I appeared by her side and pulled her towards the other wounded hero. W what happened? The woman asked in a panic. Calm D.O.W. and I'll take it from H.E.R.E., I said in my usual voice. She looked extremely startled when seeing me. The villain's fist hit the ground, he stared at it in confusion for a bit. But then noticed me. Oh oh. Japan's most infamous villain is saving a hero, the demented smile on his face seemed to get larger and more stretched, his mocking words don't really affect me much, but that smile, it irks me, I guess I have to wipe it off his face. POV Beru I looked at this sorry excuse of a villain in front of me. Seems like Shigaraki was right, this man might be a bit too rabid to keep alive well, not that I mind. Two purple tails sprouted out of my back, they were quickly covered in a thick exoskeleton. The green veins on them were visible in the joints of the exoskeleton. Both of them received a sharp pointed tip. Muscular also started covering his body in muscle mass. He looks a bit intimidating. But that doesn't really mean anything. I've killed intimidating people before without much of an issue. He rushed me with a decent speed. It's still got nothing on All Might, but I think comparing people to him is unfair. I first thought I'd find more powerful people around, but now I realize that there aren't really all that many. I only know of All Might and All for One, he raised his fist upwards, preparing to smash it into my head and crush me into the ground. One of my tails blocked its path, the impact of his fist was decent, but it didn't harm me at all. The shockwave broke some of the trees around us and pushed the heroes backwards a bit. Muscular looked quite shocked at how little his strike had managed to achieve. It didn't even make my tail flinch. But that's just because my shock absorption extends to my tail. The bulky villain wasn't really discouraged, he started swinging his fists around violently. All of his strikes were swiftly blocked by my tails, I didn't even take one step away from my initial position. The ground underneath me was cracked and the houses around us were broken down. The shockwaves his punches were releasing was compressed, he is no doubt strong. In pure physical strength, I'd say he's about half of what All Might was. Well, at least in the initial punches. The hero seemed to get progressively stronger. This guy is likely hoping I would tire out so he can finish me off. But things aren't exactly going as he planned. Weak was all I said, a simple observation. But it was enough to tip him over the edge and make him explode in anger. You fucking bug. He tried coming from different angles. But I am starting to get bored of this man's useless struggle. One of my tails parried his fist, making him take a step back as he lost his balance. While he was doing that, my other tail whipped around and struck his left side. He put his arm up to block it, but it was broken in seconds, he was sent flying into the forest breaking many trees in the process. He went flying for a good 300 meters. I did hit him with a lot of strength, it's quite impressive that he's already struggling to get back up. It's a bit of a shame while he is physically strong, there's nothing else redeeming about him. Well, I guess you could say that the most undeveloped muscle in him is his brain. His attacks are predictable, the second you get used to his muscle augmentation reading his moves becomes children play. Overall, this guy may be strong, but I think I could have beaten him when I was 10. Even if he was much faster and stronger than me, I have a hard time thinking of a way he could defeat me well, it's about time I wrap this up. He was already on his feet when I reached him. It's not like I ran to him, I just walked calmly. This fight was decent enough for testing the tail quirk. I guess I could test another one. H-E-Y-1 last H-I-T give it, your B-E-S-T, I told him with a bored tone. He gritted his teeth and growled like a wild animal. His still functional arm was instantly bulked up. All of the muscles from the broken arm strengthening this one. My tails retracted themselves into my body, as I clenched my fist and used a few strength enhancing quirks. My arm became a bit bulkier, my exoskeleton shifting to accommodate my bulking muscle mass. We both took a running start, I decided to match his speed, to let him build the necessary momentum. He strengthened his legs with his muscles, preparing for a clash. Our fists met at the same time, creating a shockwave that blew away all of the trees in a 200 meter radius. It seems his full strength is quite decent. He was also constantly piling up more strength as he pushed his muscles beyond his limits. 
His legs were firmly planted into the ground, his position perfect. He might even overpower me if I don't use more strength. Strange tubes started appearing around my arm, all pointing backwards, my mouth released some steam as the engines in my calves started running on full power. I could hear a sickening crack. Our standstill was instantly broken, my fist crushed his hand and reached his chest, breaking some of his ribs. His legs gave way as his body was broken, he was sent flying even further into the forest. This engine quirk is actually quite useful I looked at my bloodied hand as it shrunk back to its regular size. I licked off some of the blood, I may not like this guy, but his quirk is a bit useful. After assimilating his power, I slowly walked towards him. I need to make sure he doesn't survive that. As I expected, he didn't get back up after that. It would have been odd if he did. But he was still conscious. W what? H dot happened? Confusion was clearly written on his face as he coughed out blood with every spoken word. I guess he was winning that exchange at first, at least from his perspective. I walked near him, towering above him and looking down at his broken body. No hard f-e-e-l-i-n-g-s you just died because you were w-e-a-k-e-r, I said with a cold tone. He didn't get to respond as my leg came down and crushed his head into the earth. Cracking his skull and breaking his neck. That stomp also shook the forest a bit and created quite the crater. He does seem like the type of guy to have this type of mindset. Strong ruled the weak and watnit. I always found that to be a bit wrong. Strength alone won't get you all that far. At least not in all aspects. You need a combination of both strength and intelligence. Something that this guy didn't really have oh well, I guess I can head back to the bar now, or I could check on the heroes for a bit. I did save them just now. I am also a bit curious about the guy's state. I flew my way back to the scene. My clashes with muscular destroyed quite a bit of the village, thankfully, the woman managed to drag the injured man away. I flew towards them. The woman was still struggling to keep the man awake. She was so focused that she didn't even notice my presence. But the man looked up at me, tired but thankful. He then turned to the woman, who I assume is his lover, damn it she was hot. D dear. I might not make it please, take care of Coda. Why is this guy acting so dramatic over getting hit once? I guess he did take a full on strike from muscular, and he doesn't really have a strength endurance related quirk. The woman cried out, she seemed to be trying her best to stifle it. But she still failed. Well, I guess I can heal him he seems nice enough. I walked near him and crouched down. The woman was startled by my sudden appearance she almost jumped away like a cat seeing a cucumber. It made the dying guy snicker a bit. I put my hand on his abdomen for a bit, using my x-ray vision to check his insides oh. I get why he said he might not make it. His broken ribs have pierced his lungs. He might have made it if they were near a hospital, but this is a village quite far away from one. I can keep him alive for a while, but he still needs medical attention. I only have one healing Q-U-I-R-K well, the others are only self-healing and regeneration, and it's puny as all hell. I grabbed him, the woman instantly tried to stop me, but the man raised his hand. I'll take you to the hospital, I said as a faint yellow light enveloped him. He grunted a bit as I picked him up in a princess carry. Not really what I thought I'd be doing with my day, but it's not like I have anything better. My tail sprouted out of my sides this time covering him perfectly and preparing to shield him from this bumpy ride. Nearest H-O-S-P-I-T-A-L come F-A-S-T, I told the woman as I flew off. I can make it there really quickly on my O-W-N like 6 seconds or S-M-T-H, but I need to mind the speed when carrying an injured man, no matter how much protection I provide him. The journey took me around 4 minutes. I reached the hospital and directly entered through the front door. My tails uncovered the man, he looked a bit confused, but instantly realized he was in a hospital and smiled through his bloodied teeth. The nurses and doctors instantly got scared and panicked when seeing me. Sheesh, I really am famous huh totally not proud it's actually infamous, but whatever. I looked at the nearest nurse and said. Broken ribs pierced his lungs, needs immediate surgery, my words were clear enough, as the people that heard me scampered off to and brought a stretcher although they seemed a bit hesitant to get close to me. I instead walked towards them and placed the hero on the table. He muttered something to me as I walked away. Likely a thank you or something like that. Yep, he was a nice bloke. 
I'm sure I'll go drinking with him someday. All for one will also likely think I did this in the same vein I saved that random woman. Because he told me to avoid too many casualties at some point. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.